Well, thank you so much for your company this morning. Now, meal times can become the most stressful times of day for parents with picky toddlers. But Dr. Julie Basali has just published her follow up to The Nourished Baby. It's called, yep, that's right, The Nourished Toddler, and is jam packed with expert <coughs> advice about what we should be feeding our toddlers and, just as importantly, how to get them to actually eat what we serve. It is so great to have you here, Julie. Thank you. An absolute pleasure. I'm sure there are lots of parents right now tearing their hair out, getting their, mm. trying to get their toddlers to eat what they should. So tell us a little bit about your background. My background? Well, I have done a doctoral thesis in uh, infant nutrition and physical activity. But, I mean, in short, I was basically asked to write this book uh, after The Nourished Baby came out. So as soon as parents read that, they were like, you have to write the next one. Um, <laughs> Don't we need it. Us. We need it. Um, and so what I've really tried to do is take a lot of the research and translate it into practical guidelines for life with a toddler because one plus one very rarely equals two with them. That is right. I like that. Now, you wrote uh, a postpartum blog after the birth of your second son. That went viral. It did. Tell us about that. <laughs> it did. Well, I mean, I, I guess that's sort of how I fell into doing what I do online is, you know, I really struggled post the birth of both of my children, but particularly with my second, and I just started blogging about it and put it in a actual blog and yeah it just went crazy viral. It was Huffington Post, um, Woman's Day, BuzzFeed, everyone picked up on you didn't they? And it's still going. Do you know I still get posted in comments on it from like three years ago. Is that oh. strange? Is that a weird situation to be in? It is a little bit but you know like if it helps one mum feel better about her body post birth then mm. it's worth it's it. a win. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly you've done the thesis. I'm curious to know how perhaps your philosophies have changed after actually having children or or having a, to a you know a child grow into a toddler oh definitely and i mean i have to credit my first son with this because he's your very typical strong willed uh, child and you know i gave him all the best baby food made it all for him and yet when he became a toddler he was still really, really fussy. And I was like, look, I've given him the best start to life, and yet he's still going through this fussy stage, and it's actually completely normal. Yeah. It's, but it's just <laughs> so frustrating as a parent when you spend so much time making sure they've got the perfect nutrients and they just don't want to eat it. Mm. Why are so many toddlers so picky with what they do, decide to eat, or what they put in their mouths? Well, I guess, and that's sort of part of the focus of the book, is for us to actually refrain what we call um, toddler fussiness because it's not something that's negative it's very biological for them um, it actually means that they've been particular about what they eat and don't eat and we want them to grow up to be like that in the future we do want them to be particular mm. about maybe the people that they date or the careers that they choose but it's just very frustrating when they're showing that mm. when they're three mm. at the dinner time i see a lot of friends on facebook asking you know their friends oh, what do i do here have you got some top tips if we've got a fussy toddler <laughs> i do and i've actually got five in my in my book mm -hmm. but the main thing is one to know that it is normal and I think it's more about dealing with the parents as opposed to the toddler. So how do we keep, and this is in research, how do we keep that repeated exposure of those difficult foods like vegetables and mm. not lose our sanity at the same time? So one of my top tips with that is actually to try and get vegetables in the morning. So breakfast mm. time, I know it's a bit of a stressful point for a lot of families, but if you know the payoff is to do it in the morning and then you can let the gas off in the evening. You can all just chill better. out and not worry about those broccoli little trees going in around. I think so. I mean, there's a lot going on cognitively for toddlers and we want to try and battle them at their worst time mm. of day at night time, which is also our worst time of day. So if we get it in in the morning. So mm. how? Yeah. How? You know, is it you know, just a big plate of bro broccoli at breakfast time? Or? <laughs> well, actually, I have a smoothie recipe in here that has broccoli in it. Yeah, you can put zucchini oh. in smoothies too and yep. they don't even know. Yep. Uh -huh. I don't even know. <laughs> what, tell me just a little bit about that, that science behind this developmental stage for yep. toddlers. <clears throat> OK, so bear with me for a second. But if you imagine when we used to parent a gazillion million years ago, mm -hmm. basically our toddlers were toddling 
on the forest floor. So they were literally able to go around, pick up all sorts of wonderful things. So it's actually a protective mechanism for them to only eat what they recognise, both visually and themselves, because of course we weren't watching them 24-7. Now those genes haven't changed, but of course our modern food world definitely has. We don't, particularly here in New Zealand, we don't have a shortage of the food supply that yeah. we did. Um, our toddlers certainly aren't off wandering <laughs> around. Wow. So we actually need to, that's why that repeated exposure is so important. How you do that with time and money, that's that's what this answer is. So your book includes some meal plans as well. Do you write weekly meal plans for your family? I do, and I have to confess I don't love it. It's not like I get up on a Sunday and I'm like, yay, it's meal planning time. It's more it saves time and sanity in the long run. How does it help that? Well, meal planning means that you can actually, I do all my shopping online, cannot take two toddlers to a supermarket. Mm -hmm. We well, could, all. but it wouldn't be fun for anyone. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, it, no, not for the supermarket or you or for the trolley. So it just means that you've actually got all of the ingredients that you need prepped, set for each meal during the week. Um, I'm a huge fan of slow cookers, so it means that you've actually got the ingredients there. You can put it on in the morning, 5 p.m. You feel a little bit more armed and ready to go. Um, it also helps with the budget as well. Awesome. Hey, Julie, well, thank you so much. The Nourished Toddler is available in all good bookshops right now, and you can check out Dr. Julie Basali's website for further details.